the information. So, as I said, we're on module four, which is healthy nutrition. This is this is part two. Uh, part one, as we go through, we laid the first brick was the food journal, doing a food log. Uh, and we discussed the second brick, food requirements. So has anybody been able to start, keep up, and, and do some information on the food log? Yes, yes, please, no? Okay. <laughs> I Not really enough. think people, it really is advantage to take those forms, try it for a month, just write down everything you eat, get an idea what your favorite meals are, what you're eating the most, find from there we can review and find where the holes are in your diet or necessarily, not necessarily a hole, but are you meeting your your food requirements? And so that's brick number two. So those were the first part. That was part one. Again, anytime you can send me an email with some questions, uh, give me a call, schedule through the website, and we can talk about any of this information, how it relates to you personally. So moving on to the third brick for this, which is nutrition requirements, macros, wants versus needs, and brick four, labels, menu shopping, and meal prep. Now, I could hold hours of class on each one of those. So we're just scratching the surface. And 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 that's the whole purpose of this class is to is to get you uh thinking about what what you can do along these paths along the, in this healthy nutrition module to improve your nutrition plan. And that's the whole idea. Develop a plan. We want you to write out that that nutrition plan just like you wrote out the fitness plan, hopefully. So, and maybe an attitude module, if you wrote something down to help you keep your attitude going, keep your mindset in a positive manner. So that's what those are all about. So third brick nutrition requirements, macros, wants versus needs. What do we want to eat versus what do we need to eat? And then again, the fourth brick labels, menu shopping and meal prep. We're just going to scratch the surface on eat. And I know you're going to have questions, so bring when you can. <clears throat> okay, healthy nutrition. Want is always to lose weight. The number one want people worry about in life, going to the gym, is I want to lose weight. Everybody thinks they carry too much weight. And a lot of people do. A lot of people should carry some weight more than they think they should. Some people should lose some weight. But it's still the number one goal. Everybody wants to lose weight. And I tell people, and I've told you in all this, you can't out-exercise the fork. So the best way to control your weight is to, is to control your nutrition. Set yourself up in a good plan. <clears throat> I mentioned in the email, the Nutrition and Weight Loss, my Onboard 101 program. That everybody started that, or at least quite a few people have started. Has anybody finished that program? Well, if no. you had, you would have a great knowledge on all things metabolism, so you would learn about how your body works. And it's a good primer for what this information is. So once you start thinking about nutrition, once you start thinking about the things you eat, how it's affecting your body, how your nutrition is affecting your gut, which is so important to our health, how your nutrition is affecting your moods, your attitude, it's all so dependent on all these blocks together, but and your nutrition is just as important as any other one. That onboard one or on program, people, it's cheap. It takes there's 10 chapters. It takes you about 15 minutes to go through, watch a couple of short videos, and it's just a couple of questions. So you get an idea. You understand how how your body works. That's basically the course. It's online. You learn all about how your basic human physiology is and how it affects your life. Weight Management 101. So this is just is basically a question on here. The most accurate form of measurement for health and weight management is, is it pounds on a scale, body mass index, body composition? Who has an idea about that one? Probably your BMI. BMI is absolutely the worst thing you can do to choose or to determine how healthy you are. BMI the, the, <laughs> they were created by the insurance industry just so they could charge you more money on your rates. 
BMI, body mass index, is an antiquated system. Actually, pounds on a scale is not the answer as well because you could be a healthy weight or you could be a non-healthy weight. It's basically your body composition. How much lean mass versus how much body fat you have. That's an indicator of your overall health. So these are the kind of questions that you get in there, in that program. It's well worth your time. Go through it. You register it for free through the website. Go up to the resources section. Check it out. I think you'll really get get some good information out of it. There's a few videos and some questions. Okay. One size does not fit all. People are genetically different, individual lifestyle, food preferences, and individual caloric requirements. This is a perfect example of what I talked about. Here's Joe Dider, age 40, 6'1", weighs 200 pounds. And in that, he's got 24% body fat. He goes on a calorie restriction diet. And he takes 1,000 calories per day off. He's like, wow, that's cut. he's cut a third of his nutrition out. He weight drops 190 in just two weeks, so he's lost 10 pounds. His symptoms are his metabolic rate starts to decline. He feels sluggish. He doesn't have energy. He then goes into a plateau. So he says, I have to cut more calories. I'm not losing any more weight. He cuts it again to 1,500 calories. Again. Okay, somebody's waiting to get in. Cindy. <clears throat> His weight drops again to 180. He requires more sleep. He's even more sluggish than he was. He's now got food cravings and he stores fat. What happened? So after... The week, after 10 weeks, he's gone from 200 down to 170, but his body fat's only decreased by 2%. He's lost 30 pounds of weight, but only 2% body fat. So he's lost 28 pounds of lean tissue, muscle, bone, tendons, all the good parts in your body he lost by going on that calorie-restrictive diet. So then it gets worse. He goes back off his diet. He's eating 100 or 1,000 calories less a year in than last month and last year, he's up to 100 or 203 pounds. He's now increased his body fat to 32%. So he's gone the act. He's got actually the the exact opposite results that he hoped to get by going on a crash diet. <clears throat> so it's basically the concept of individuality with with dieting and nutrition is the old paradigm is you must conform to the program. You're going to eat this, this, and that. No ifs ands outs about it. Doesn't work. Proven history is proven that's not the work. The new paradigm, the new program is your program, our program, whatever the programs we come up together for you must conform to you and your requirements, not a specific set or a random set of ideas. <clears throat> Height, weight, gender, all these things, these physical characteristics are unique to you and affect the way you metabolize food, the way you process food. So you can't go on. The old, I'm going on the cabbage diet. Remember that one? Everybody's eating a ton of cabbage. And boy, well, that was not good. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't try that one. So, I, I, you know, but I know a lot of people did. And they found themselves alone in rooms all by themselves for a while. So that is <laughs> not a working program. <laughs> Our body requires, this over the other side. Our body requires specific balance of protein, carbohydrates, and fat. That balance determine how your body converts these elements into fuel. Comprehensive weight control program one includes exercise and is the only effective treatment for long-term weight reduction and weight control. So I just said diet is all your weight is all about diet, all about the nutrition. But to make that a permanent change, you have to throw the exercise component in there. That's why we have the balance program in a lifestyle, we have equal importance placed on nutrition and exercise, as well as stress, as well as your attitude. So these are important things to remember. Exercise, aerobic exercise, anaerobic exercise, fat requires oxygen to burn. So getting when we go back into the fitness first module next time through, we're going to explain a lot of these things and, and why you need to have certain types of exercise to get the results you want. So the idea is to achieve your goals. If you're looking at nutrition, and that's what we all do, is to focus on fat loss instead of weight loss. To discover more about how your body works 
Again, the onboard program will give you some insight into that. Learn more about foods and become an expert on food. And number one, design the menu for your body's needs. Those are important. There's, there's nothing more important than your ability and our ability to read our bodies, to understand how food affects us. Again, nutrition log. On the form that I gave that we looked at and I forwarded to y'all, talking about how your mood is affected by the food you eat, how you feel after you eat. These things all should be signals for you that you need to make some change in your consumption of any particular food group. Not out of the realm. A lot of people take nutritional supplements. They hear, oh, I'm really deficient in, in vitamin D. Well, we all are. Everybody in this part of the country is deficient in vitamin D because we don't get enough bloody sunshine. So we need to have vitamin D. We need to find out which is the best ones, which is the best company for getting efficacy on getting that vitamin D into your system because they're all not the same. But it's first and most important to get all those nutrients and all those supplements through your food and to be as consistent as you can in your diet. That's the key, consistency in anything we do. But getting back, we need to develop. It's up to the side. Come on, move over there. Pour it down. Okay. We need to develop a nutritional plan that meets your particular metabolic requirements. That's brick three, wants and needs. I sent you all that link to the macro calculator. Did anybody go through and take care of that? Come an estimate? Denise did? Good, good, good. We're going to quickly show that for those who have it. And I sent you the, the directions on this. I highly recommend there's many of these types of tools out there and available. But if you go through this one, you'll get a, a, a good synopsis, a good estimate of what your macro requirements could be. This is that macrocalculator.org. I put a copy of the website here. On this site, this is a free site. Folks, there is a lot of information on this site. There are all kinds of programs, all kinds of information. You can go through each of these little articles, these blog posts, and get a whole bunch of good stuff for you nutritionally. And it all has to do, again, with your macros, your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates, finding out what it is that you need to eat for your particular metabolism and your needs. <clears throat> Here it is. This is it. Macro calculator. Easy way to calculate macros. You go through that. This is what I came through. I filled it out for me. I said I'm 60, 100 years old, 225 pounds. I'm an active lifestyle. And I eat three meals a day. And this is what it gave me. I should be eating 1,060 calories a meal, carbs, fat, and proteins. And that's to support my weight. That wouldn't be necessarily to lose weight. I'm trying to keep the muscle mass I have and lose the fat. So that protein number right there is one you can't fudge on. You got to keep your protein levels up so you can keep your muscle fat, your muscle intact. Rick number four, again, go back and, and, and take care of that. Get that estimate done. Figure it out. It's not the same, and it's not going to be as exact as if you went and saw a good nutritionist and they went through some calculations on their own, did some body fat measurements, find out really what your, your, your body life, your body style is, uh, whether you're an ectomorph, an endomorph, and all those aliens that are out there. All our body types that affect your nutritional pro profile. <clears throat> a quick, clear look at food labels. Now, we've all seen these food labels. These are standard food labels that have to be on every food. And this is the type that are on packages with more than 40 square inches of surface space. When you have smaller packages, you get a smaller, more condensed label that you won't get as much information. So you got to understand how these labels work. So when you go shopping, you can read and get the best choice for you. Here's a quick description of how it how it looks. Again, I will send you, if you haven't got these, I'll send a packet of emails out with all these attached so you can print them out. This is your serving size. Make sure you understand that there's usually more than one serving in a container. So that should come into 
play. <clears throat> calories is your total calories. Calories from fat. This explains. <clears throat> Look for foods that are rich in the vitamins and not high in carbohydrates. As the next slide tells you that Look for foods with five grams of sugar or less per serving. That's an important thing. And the closer you are from the total amount of carbohydrate grams to sugar grams, you know that you're in the junk food section in the zone. The higher the carbs in relation to total carbs or sugars tells you you're really in the bad zone. So these are foods you want to stay away from as much as you can. Mm. Ingredients aren't all listed here. Uh, it, it talks about total daily val volume of sodium should be less than 2,400 milligrams. Folks, if you have one piece of processed anything, you're going to be hitting 2,400 milligrams. There's so much sodium put into any kind of processed food on the market. Just get used to looking at the labels. If, if it's something you're interested in, there are people who will just look at food and say, I'm not going to read the label. I want that. And they put it in their cart and it may not be the best choice because you may find another product down on the, on the shelves, just down, maybe not on the top. I level things in the grocery stores are the most expensive. They pay the most to get put at that level. They're not always the healthiest. The healthiest are on the floor. Or way up high, not at eye level. And the end caps, I don't know if you any, any heard that any end caps on the aisles at the stores, those grocery companies pay the most to have their products stored on the end caps because everybody walks around and looks at the end caps on the aisles. So those are probably most likely to be your least healthiest foods that you, you can find. So just consider that when you're reading food labels. Again, We'll go into it more, and I have more information if you're really interested in finding out how to read labels and how to make sense of it based on what you have. So just take a chance. Go through your 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 cabinet, see what you got, check out some of these numbers, and see if their potassium is 3,500 milligrams a day. That's something good we need to have, 350. You need potassium. So these are all important things. Any questions on, on the label? No, oh, okay. We'll move on. Here's a here's a little thing for you to work on. Now, here's a, a particular label, and these are questions you should ask when you look at a label. What is the serving size of this product? One cup per serving. How many calories per serving are in this product? Hundred calories per serving. So if it's two servings, you're getting two hundred sixty calories. What percentage of daily value of sodium is there? 125 milligrams. What did we say on the other one? 2,400 is the most you should have. So that's really not all that high. Total carbohydrates, 12. Sugars is 12. So all of this carbohydrate is coming from sugars. So this is not a very good product. So the question is, based on this food label, would you consider this product to be healthy? Or not healthy. Anybody want to throw something out? Not healthy. Not healthy. I, I would totally agree. Not healthy. <clears throat> so that's something that, again, just a quick little thing that you can look at. It doesn't have all the uh, condiments, all the things in it, all the items in it. But this is a, a label that you'll see in a lot. Get used to looking at them if you're not one that looks at them. So here was the food log. When you come up and you go through and you get those macros from the, the macro calculator, you should be able to plug in, okay, you need X amount of protein, X amount of carbs, X amount of fat on this top line. Put it right along the top. Write down what you're planning on eating, see what they are, see how they fall in line. If you do this little assignment per se do it a couple times you, you'll come really quick to the understanding that most of our food choices are really not optimum for overall better health and, and again you 
I don't recommend people do this all the time. You could go crazy worrying about tracking all this information. But if there's something that you eat on a regular basis, be a little inquirious. Try to find out what's in it. Read that label. Put it down on a, on a log book like this so you can come back to it and see what that diet is. So maybe that breakfast that you chose is not something you would, you'd want to have on a long term if you're concerned about improving your nutritional profile. Again, here's your macro guide. If you find a steak is X amount of calories, write it down. Develop your food guide, macro guide, so that you can refer to that. For the foods that you normally eat, that's important. We have to get a track on what we're currently eating before we can evaluate where we need to make some changes on it. It's just, it's just like our exercise plan, our fitness plan. We're not going to be riding a treadmill, running the treadmill for two miles if it's not good for our goals and it's not good for our joints, our hips, our knees, our ankles, and all these things. So we wouldn't want to do that. So you need to use these as evaluation tools. <clears throat> Again, I gave you this shopping list. This is what you can take when you're going before you go shopping. You just check off what you need to buy, and you stick to that list. Simplest way to do it, how many people regularly go to the store with a shopping list? Anybody out there? Shopping lists? I, I find myself guilty a lot of times. I just, oh, I'm going to stop at the store and I'm not remembering what I saw on my list at home. I'm not going to make sure I shop appropriately. So there are these new apps coming out. They're really good. And if you got an Alexa device at home, you'll be able to say, hey, Alexa, not you, not mine. Put, hey, Alexa, put bread on my shopping list. To your shopping list. Alexa just told me she added bread to my shopping list. If you have Alexa on your phone, you which most people can download an app if you don't have it, say, hey, Alexa, what's my shopping list? When you get to the store, she'll read it off and it'll be right on your phone. It's so simple. I got to start doing that more so that I don't miss purchase things at the store when I know I need things so I don't have to go back. And when I go back, then I'm probably going to buy something I shouldn't have bought anytime. So. Use these tools, folks. They're very good. Here's just another form of a shopping list. Again, you get copies of these, same one before, dairy, biscuits, all the different things you can check out that you want to have in your diet. So healthy nutrition, the food log, food requirements, how many calories should I eat? We talked about that in part one when we went good through question, how many grams Tim. Of I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Ken, um, Dennis. Can you go back to the shopping list? Because I didn't see any like seafood or I see meat. Is there Pasta, seafood? Drinks, condiments. There's a couple different uh, pages to this. I may have only had one page here. Snacks, okay. spices, comments. I see fish is underneath deli meat. Oh, okay. But on the meat, it's like the sixth one or fifth one down. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see up here at the top, chicken to fish, ground beef, ham, turkey. Yeah. Sausage, yeah. Okay. All right. These are just simple tools. You, if Like I said, you could just go on the internet and search for shopping lists. You could go on the, on the internet and search for Mediterranean diet shopping lists. These things are available for free out there. There's tons of them. I got these on an Etsy program that I had for a few years that I purchased for $4.90 and I got like 65 different menus, different kinds of, of forms that I use periodically. So that's why I included those in there. Um, get yourself a good shopping list. These are good for just jogging your mind. Keep them in your car. Keep a blank one in your car, somewhere in your car. So when you have that day and you get to the shopping, you go shopping uh, when you weren't planning, you can see your list and it can jog your memory of what you may need at home. If you shop good, you'll eat good. If you shop bad, you're not going to eat so good. Just simple facts. <clears throat> okay. Num brick number three was nutritional requirements. Macros, wants versus needs. When we know our macros, when we know how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbohydrates, how many grams of fats you should have in your diet, you break that down per meal, now you create a menu based on that need, and then you create your shopping list based on that menu. 
It's all about meal preparation op options. This is the next part of it. Let me go back to that. So it's all about building a habit, creating a new habit, a new pattern that's going to eventually become a ritual so that you're finding yourself making better choices about your nutrition. That's the key. It's no different than in your fitness. It's no different than relieving stress by not regularly putting yourself in a stressful situation. It's the same with nutrition. Get yourself in a pattern. Get yourself creating that new habit. Get that habit tracker out that we talked about a few sessions ago. Set one up for your nutrition. Eat, eat more of this. Eat less of that. Check it off. Get yourself in the use of just putting it in your mindset. Putting it in your th train of thought is going to help you put yourself in better light when mm. you have to make those decisions. If you know you shouldn't be going for the Hagen dazs because it's really not the best guy in ice cream out there. Halo is much better. Uh, then you'll stick away from the Hagen dazs So there's, there's certain things that you'll get yourself in the habit of not choosing, and then it'll become second nature. You've got that habit in, in train it becomes a ritual and who wahoo you find yourself eating healthier a little bit at a time nutrition is just like anything else in our lifestyle not too much not too soon not too hard you know we're not going to make drastic drastic changes in our nutritional menus in our dab in our habits we're not going to do them too fast and we're not going to make them so hard. You're not going to start going out and eating kale every day because nobody likes kale <laughs> that much. <laughs> uh, but ideally, if you ate a, you know, you know, whole foods, natural diet, you'd be eating a lot more of those things. So one by one, bit by bit, habit by habit. That's how we go, folks. That's why we're doing this one brick at a time to help build that cornerstone. All right. Again, meal preparations is important. We talked about it uh, just a second ago. Continue. You have two options or many options, but you can continue eating as you are. Or you can make changes. You can create new habits. My recommendation in, in what I tell people that this is not found to be really too much is to take some time, develop five new healthier meals per month. Not necessarily saying you're going to be eating all five of these, these new healthier meals per month, but because that's 60 meals over the course of the year, you've got yourself a nice Rolodex of healthier meals. So if you do five, one a week, throw in a snack, that's your fifth is a nice healthy snack. So you develop one healthier version of whatever you're eating and start fine tuning it in the ingredients to make it a little healthier. By the end of the year, you're gonna have yourself a whole new set of options for you. Simply by changing or creating one healthier version of whatever you're eating per week for a month and a healthy snack, you're gonna get your five new healthier meals per month. From this new, you're gonna create your shopping list, just like we talked about. You know what the meals are, you know what you need for it. Shop the list. You go shopping with that list. And the last one is, is you prepare, you prepare your new meals and the new with your new meal options. I'm going to minimize you guys at the bottom for a second so we can see this all. Meal preparation is, is I found to be a key in keeping you on track, keeping your nutritional choices better, is to find a way for you to optimize your cooking, optimize your time spent preparing your food. I found very, it took a while for me even to get into doing meal prep days. For me, Sunday's a meal prep day. I go shopping on Sunday afternoon, get all the things that are on my meal list for the next week, and sometimes I don't have five days or six days or seven days meals picked out. I may only have two that I want to make sure I eat that week. And so I'll create my meal list. I'm going to create my shopping list. I'm going to go shop the list. 
I'm going to come home and I'm going to prepare the foods. I'm going to try to prepare four to five meals at that one time. It may be four to five dinners, maybe lunches, because those are the ones that are most important to, to make sure that we keep our, our macro levels in line. You may not use it as Sunday. You may find Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday is better on your schedule to do a meal prep day. But I highly suggest try to develop a, a pattern to creating a meal prep day. You're going to shop more efficiently when you're, you're shopping for five meals that you can pre-cook or the freeze, freezer meals to set up yourself up to cooking later in the week to save you so much time every day. Take that anxious Worry about what you're going to eat away from you. Easy, take meal out of the freezer, heat it, reheat it if it's a meal prep cooked meal, or if it's a freezer meal, taking that out, putting it in a crock pot or in a slow cooker, and in a half an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever the meal is, you'll have yourself meal prepared, and it's all done. No, no worry about it. Folks, I do it now. And it's, I found to be so helpful uh, to keeping me on, on a, a, a more solid nutritional plan without as many cheat days, because we all have those. The more options, like I said, is the freezer meals. I have that one. When I'm done with this, I'm going to go through and show you the website for these types of things. There's kitchen apps. There's eatingwell.com. Folks, there's hundreds of online companies that offer you assistance and help. And most of them are free, and that's always good. Uh, so you can get yourself some good ideas for some free, healthier meals. Uh, the freezer meals, I think I paid $99 lifetime access, and she adds five meals every month, new meals to her whole program with shopping lists, with items, everything so that I can prepare five of this, five of that, and a pretty simple method of doing it so meal preps important it's just as important as anything else as getting your exercise in that day is to getting your meal plan set up and getting those meal prep days in whether it be a pre-cooked where you're cooking five pieces of chicken putting them in separate containers or whether you're making five freezer bags and putting all the ingredients in there freezing it for later on in the week so takes a little bit of effort. It's not a hard thing to do, but if you stick with it, just like anything else, you should be able to do that. So again, this is the meal. This is the one that I belong to, the familyfreezer.com. So it's a it's a simple thing. You sign up, you log in, and it's got all kinds of stuff, which we'll get to. Any questions about that? No questions. You guys are so easy. I sent you one in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. I'll get to that in a second. Let me look at that. Yes, I will bring copies of the meals, a couple of them that I use uh, to the next session. Um, and and it's a that you know I mean I could do a whole we're going to do a whole seminar on on doing freezer meals or on doing food prep. And like I said, I, I did that at Senior Apartments in Twinsburg a few years back. And uh, mm -hmm. they were, a lot of people thought it was a good social thing for one thing. Uh, but it was another thing to that they were able to expose themselves to some other people's really good cooking and some good meals and uh, build some connections and friendships on it that way as well. So uh, it's, it's a great idea to, to do this even in groups when when. Some people do, they go to an apartment or go to someone's house and they cook five or six meals. They each cook them together and they share them and you get a different palate. So these are all different ways to do it. Um, I will I will do that. Thanks for that, Pauline. I will do that. Okay. Uh, any Tim, other questions? Yeah, Tim, I have a question. Do any of these programs deal with um, special diets as in, you know, allergies or in my case, vegetarian and gluten-free. There are uh, specialty programming out there. Those are usually uh, not free courses or free access to because that involves a little bit more nutritional input from nutritionists. Um, and 
but as far as vegan or you know total vegan or vegetarian there are you, there are tons of things out there you know just just go to the library go to the diet section i was there in a twinsburg library the other day there is probably five rows on the shelves of all vegan cookbooks you know so you can pull out all kinds of different recipes from uh, these types of things uh again it there's stuff out there if you just ask around uh, go to the library is a good source. Internet's a great source. You don't even have to leave the house for that. So um, great choice. Again, I'm not being a nutritionist. I can't tell you what you should and shouldn't eat. A nutritionist could help you. And if you have that kind of nutritional requirements, it's good to best to throw something off the wall with a nutritionist and find out what their, their opinion is um, so, so that they can help you make some better choices for yourself. But Again, if you do the meal log, folks, if you're having, you know, some kind of crazy meal you haven't ate before and you write down how you felt after, you're going to know because you're going to put your mind on it that maybe that's something I shouldn't try again. <laughs> it didn't have a good reaction with me. Uh, we're, we're our own test kitchen, folks. You, know, you see that test kitchen show on the weekends, right? And they're all cooking and they're all testing each other's food. Test yourself on your cooking. Test yourself on, you go to a restaurant and you have a particular meal, you feel good and satisfied afterwards. You don't have any upset stomach or any other issues with it. Maybe that's a meal that you want to put on your wish list and try to develop a healthy recipe for that and put it in your regular mix of meals. Um, but as I, as I said, the first section, we all have 10 12 meals that we eat most of the time. Most people don't have a huge palate of 60 different recipes that they get to on a regular basis. We're pretty consistent with what we like. So the object is to make that a healthier version of it. Uh, and then to expand, slowly increasing more options for yourself, increasing better ways to cook it, prepare it, either in, in a meal prep day or a freezer prep day, whatever it may be, group sessions, you know, group get togethers and everybody's cooking a meal. Uh, one day this person cooks meals and they share it. You know, there's a lot of ways to do it just to make nutrition fun. It's fun. It should be fun. Right. We talked about, do you eat to live or do you live to eat? You know, there are people who just live to eat and they want the best, most best tasting food they can get. Let's make that best tasting food a little healthier. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, again, I've learned by trial and error myself, certain uh, condiments I can't eat, certain chives. Don't really like chives and they really don't treat me very well. So I stay away from chives. So there's there's things you find out that you have to, and it, that's the only way to do it, 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 is to be able to read yourself, learn your body, learn as much as you can about this stuff. And it'll it'll come so much easier, so much easier. Again, routines, habits, and rituals. Create nutritional, healthy nutritional habits, routines. Start slow and let it grow. And the meals, like I said, you don't need to switch your diet and then pick up a Mediterranean book. I'm starting to eat Mediterranean tomorrow. You're going to fail miserably. It's, it's hard to do to make gross changes like that. One meal at a time, folks. One step at a time when we're exercising. One meal at a time. Just improve one meal, maybe add another new meal similar to that, that you find something you like the taste of, and it's a healthier choice. So don't get overwhelmed with this. And you can, it's so easy to get overwhelmed with worrying about eating healthier. And when you worry about it too much, you go for the Hagen dazs I know it. I've seen it. I've done it <laughs> myself. <laughs> but now it's the Halo ice cream. But um. So you, you, you don't get overwhelmed. You got to keep a positive attitude and a mindset towards nutrition like anything else. You know, learn how to create a good, healthy routine. that will become a habit and then becomes a ritual. And then you're, you're down the road and your nutrition cornerstone is healthier than ever. And it'll help balance your life out by eating better nutrition. Um, but it's up to you. You know, it, it's up to me for my nutrition. It's up to you for your nutrition to make better choices uh, because we are, you know, you heard the expression, we are what we eat. 
No, we become what we eat. <laughs> Not necessarily we are. If we eat healthy, we become healthy. If we eat unhealthy, we become unhealthy. So uh, we don't turn into a turnip. But if we eat turnips, we're going to feel better. Guaranteed. Um, so just think about it like that. Keep a positive attitude. If you're having a bad day and you need something, you need that piece of chocolate, I'm on the same way. I'll get me a little little small piece, just a sample. But just don't go overboard. You know, keep a positive attitude. Yeah, I, I, I tough for me today. I'll fight. Reach out. Phone a friend. Hey, I'm having a stressful day. Want to get together and eat something healthy? There's a lot of ways to handle it to keep a positive mindset on on your nutrition, but think about it as you know it's it's a lifestyle, folks. This is all a part of a lifestyle. It's not a thing we do. It's something we become. Something who we are is to eat healthy, and it's hard to do, especially this day and age. Like we talked about, people have this predetermined that it's so expensive to eat healthy. It may cost you a little bit more, but if you eat healthier, you'll actually eat less bad food, and that will make a big difference in your bottom line costs. If you're eating a little bit more expensive food than a lot of unhealthier food that's cheaper, you're going to be ahead in the long run. It's simple math, <laughs> but I've done the math on myself and found out all the unhealthy things I eat. And July is another month. This is my log month. So I'm going to log everything I eat in the month of July. It's coming up. And I go back and reevaluate what I ate for the month, where I could save some money, where I can save some time and and, and just keep reviewing it. And, and that's how we all get better. So any other questions? None. You guys are easy, or you know it all. <clears throat> Let me see. I don't think I had any other slides here. Nope, 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 nope. All right, if that's the end, let's see. I got, oh, I got some more chat questions here. Gary is a little long. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if there's things you can cut out in your life, Dairy would be one that we'd all be healthier for. We're all addicted to sugar. And you know why? There's a lot of sugar in dairy products. There's a lot of natural sugar in dairy. And if you get hooked on sugar like we all are, uh, you're going to you're gonna like dairy. Because <laughs> dairy is full of sugar. Especially the low-fat dairies. Because what do they do to take the fat out? They put sugar in to make it palatable because it tastes as, doesn't taste as good. So can we do a hands-on meal prep session? Yeah, that's part of the next session is, is going through and actually doing that. Um, for a small enough group, we'll come on all down to the Kearney household and we'll cook some stuff up. I mean, that's I don't have a problem doing that at all. Uh, it, it You know, I've done it with a few people at a time. You know, we don't have a huge kitchen, but we can sit around six or seven people around and, and discuss and, and go through things. And I, I enjoy the heck out of that too, because I always learn something, some shortcut that somebody else has that I never thought of that I learned. So those are great, great things to do. Any other questions there? Okay. 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 Let, let me unshare this screen. Let's stop this. And I'm going to share another screen. Okay. One more. I'm going to share my computer screen. Where is it at? I was there. Just gonna hold on. Escape, I have to make it smaller. All right, here we go. Oh, we don't want you seeing all my mail. That's not what I wanted to share. Hold mm. on. Let me get it out. These things get in the way. Mm. One second. That's not it. Go across to the next one. My camera's in the way. 
Move this out of the way. Move this down to the side. All right. There was a macro calculator we talked about. This is what it looks like. You enter that information in. It'll scroll you down. It'll it'll give you an answer pretty quick. Here is the fam the freezer meals that I belong to. You get into the into their website, and this just lists you all the new meals that she has on and her. If you pick out, I I I checked out a whole bunch of camping stuff since I'm camping. So she created this whole list of camping things you can prepare ahead. And and there's just hundreds of recipes, collections, different collections. When you when you when you pick out a a let me open one up. Onions, you could create print the label and the recipe. So you can go ahead, it tells you what you need on there. Boom. Everything's here. You can adjust it by servings. You can change it to two, three servings, and it'll print you out your print. It's all there. It's just an example of something that I use. Uh, used a lot of the crock pot. I just got an Instant Pot last year. I'm learning how to use that. It cooks way too fast for me, but it works really good. Basically a pressure cooker. So there's chicken recipes, beef recipes, vegetarian recipes uh, that are all on there. Here's the Kitchen Abs website. This is a, a, a free site that they have all kinds of menus and stuff you can find on here. Gives you nutritional facts. Pretty, pretty nice, it's, it, you know, how to peel the hard-boiled eggs. I have a hard time doing that. Okay, that's just another one. I recommend this eatingwell.com. Eating Well is a good website. Again, all kinds of information, special diets. Here you go, gluten-free, vegetarian, and there's more as well. If you're diabetic, different meal plan. These are all things that are free. There, there's a lot of information out there. Well and good. Subscribe to wellandgood.com and you get all kinds of good information, health information. I highly recommend when you're bored, just thumb around this site a little bit. You'll find all kinds of information pertinent to everybody's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I like to... I like, I really like the family freezer meals. It's a really good site, good information, easy to make. Uh, there's videos on there. You can, you can check out some videos, how to videos and not even join to see how she goes about doing the meal prep. It's pretty cool. Uh, they walk you, walk you through it all. Uh, I also recommend WebMD. Has anybody been to the WebMD site? There is so much information on the WebMD site. That is free information about health and about fitness. So take a look there and you'll get some good information as well there. So that being said, let me move my camera back so I can see it better. Any other questions? Go back to the Zoom. No questions? All right. That's about all that we have for the day. <clears throat> Send me an email. If you have a question, uh, go to the website. Send an email. Schedule a phone call. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about any of that information that are on there. So, Thank you, Tim. Uh, you're welcome, Kim. Jean, you all right? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know if you were dozing off there a little bit on me or not, but a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. It's okay. <laughs> Some people don't like the tone of my voice. I put them asleep. Uh Pauline, no, you good? Any bad. questions, Pauline? No, Gail. No, Cindy, I appreciate your input on the questions. Uh, I will bring some of those meal things to next Monday's. Call and register. And we'll move this down to the last of the cornerstones of stress management module. And it's interesting. I really, I, 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 I learn a lot every day about a lot of different things like this. And I picked up some new good information recently on stress through some of the uh, podcasts I listen to regular and uh, 
some things I'm I'm learning every day. So by being a lifelong learner, you pick up new stuff all the time that will help yes. you out a lot. And yeah, I see I see there was a another chat. No. Any other questions in the chat? Okay. YouTube channel, Prime Fit Life at Prime Fit Life on YouTube at YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that will get you to my videos where all these videos have been housed. You can review them at will whenever you want and uh, go from there. All right. I'll sign out then. Thanks, Tom. I'm sorry it took a whole hour. I don't like to be that long winded, but it's, it's like good. getting that ball rolling down the hill. It doesn't want to stop. So. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. All right. You're Thank welcome, you. folks. Have a great day. We'll see you next session live in person. All, All right. right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.